Father and he said, Gle, and I just heard Gle and everything went completely blank. Uh, <laughs> and, and, like anything we had planned to say, anything that was, you know, I was completely, like from that moment for about two hours, it's a complete blank, I don't remember. And even up to that, Marchetti, like you, you know when they say that the nominees are, and the screen goes into this little force boxes, I mean, were you thinking, <coughs> Uh, this isn't going to happen, or were you thinking, I think we might just do that? What were you, what was going through your head? Actually, I, I, was, I was terrified of that moment, because like, we went to rehearse the song, and uh, you know, they, would, they would get up on stage and they'd run through the whole show as a rehearsal, like, on, so that they'd have it perfectly on time and everything. And every time, whether it was Best Actress or you know, for, for Animated Film, every time you hear the, and the Oscar goes to, whether it's about you or not, it's just such a tense moment, because yeah. everybody is like, you know, in this ex ex expectation moment. So I was terrified of that moment coming on the show. And then, and then when it was there, I just, you know, you just kind of all tense up. And, and then when, it, when we heard our names, you just overflow with joy. And, and the, the build-up was great because in this country there was a lot of kind of excitement and even uh, where you're sitting now actually, Glenn, uh, two weeks ago Colin Farrell was saying, come on, this could do, go That's all the way. There was great support, wasn't there? And, yeah. and you got a text from the main man as well. And the <laughs> who, where, where, who texted you when, how, what did he say? Oh, well, I mean, it was just, you know, the build-up to, the, build up to, the, to the day, I, just got, I, I got like 100 texts the day of the, of the awards. And uh, I guess what was kind of surprising for me and, and very, a very pleasant surprise was that I got a text off Bono, which is a bit like, you know, it's just surreal. I mean, getting, a, you know, getting, it's a, you know, what's the famous thing someone said? Someone asked Bono who's the most famous person in his address book, and you know, and he, they, they, he said like George Bush or someone. I can't yeah. remember what he said. What, what probably wasn't George Bush. Uh, it was probably like more like Nelson Mandela. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, and, and then someone asked The Edge who was the most famous person in his phone book, and he said, he said Bono. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, <laughs> You know, which was a kind of a, it just shows you the sort of scale. It's like, it's like we're about to go on the stage, and we're, I'm, I remember I'd gone in and got some strings for the guitar, and I was tuning it up. God, look at that. And it's like showing Mara, look, Bono. Yeah. Like, it was just, like, it just kind of looks a bit surreal. So, but, uh, you know, it was, it was a great thing. I mean, it may, definitely boosted our confidence usually to go up there. And, 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 I, and again, that thing of getting a get messages from my friends and that was great but to get a message like that was a bit like getting a message from Christy Moore or someone it was like that thing of like you know okay do it for Ireland and Colin yeah. was had been in that morning Colin Farrell was in and he was talking to us about how I'm going to introduce you and and he was really happy for us and there was just a real sense of like you know Daniel Day-Lewis is out there Saoirse is out there you know, we're, we're gonna. You know, it'd be, wouldn't it be amazing tonight to take one home? It was a national pride issue. Very service. much. And and you know, there was that moment, wasn't there? The little wobble a couple of weeks beforehand, <laughs> where it's kind of the song was nearly taken away know, from you. Know, and, and that, that, and, that and was, in the newspapers, people were saying he didn't even write it. Someone else did. It was like, oh my god. Oh no! It, yeah, yeah. You know, stop. What happened? There was a kind of confusion over when the song was written, wasn't it? There or? was an incident. There was a, there was a, a slight. Uh, some somebody pointed out. Uh, Someone on, on the frames message board had, had said, I'm really happy for the lads and all, but uh, it wasn't, you know, didn't the lads play that song loads? And isn't there some rule about them not being allowed to play it live? A fan? Which, yeah, yeah, well, he didn't realise, but it was just one of those things where, where someone pointed out the fact that the song had been performed. And of course we performed, or so, like we're not, you know, we're not the, the kind of people that wake up in the morning and write songs for movies, put on the coffee and, you know, <laughs> knock out a film score. We don't do that. We're musicians, we're, we're songwriters, so we tour and we play. So uh, there was a bit of a kind of like, you know, the Oscar people were like, oh, okay, well, uh, well, technically that disqualified. And we were like, Wait, what? And, uh, but, you know, they had looked into it and, you know, we, we basically oh. cooperated with them and, and they, they were like, now it's fine, we, we looked at it. You got the nomination, so you're there, you get the, the, you got the beautiful dress organised. Glenn, you decided to opt out of a tux, as, as I saw. It, was, uh, it looked like a very nice tweed suit, if I may say so. I yeah, know well, you have, to wear, you have to wear a tux uh, to the thing, and I didn't, uh, I just didn't, you know. I, d I did actually, I wore one on the way in. Uh, I just took the, I mean, just went to a higher place and got a tux. I didn't go for any of the, you know, the big super, uh, super name. Type of thing, and then the suit that they gave me, we had, we myself and Mar had done a, a funny thing where the where people at Vogue had done like the people we reckon will win an Oscar photo shoot, and they you know they'd done a thing with Eddie Vedder, and uh, they you know they, so they took photographs of sort of famous uh, you know people that they would hope would win. Yes, and they did me and Mar, you know, and we were kind of very reluctant about it because Vogue was you know we were like Vogue is just one step away from you know Hello Magazine, and who wants to be in that? And, you know, <laughs> So there was, a, there was definitely that sense of, you know. <laughs> but, 
the good news was they gave us a soup. Uh, yeah. You know, a lovely Italian soup. Yeah, I don't know what the name of the guy was. Uh, can, yeah. I, can I ask you this? I don't know if it's a real silly question, but it's the one that kind of I'd be dying to ask you at the bar. When you get to the, Mark, I'll put this to you, you know, when you're told you're there, you're, there's a lot of support, the, the vibes are very strong and in your favour. And you, did, did, it, did you scratch down some words in the back of a cigarette packet or did you, did you think you should have some sort of a speech or the bones of something written? Did you secretly compose a speech in your head? Well, no, we, we kind of uh, consider it bad luck to, to prepare a speech, you know, you kind of like, to, you, you don't, you know, you dare to hope, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to curse it by, by preparing a speech. So we thought, we, we, all, we, all we arranged beforehand was, because cause we have, the, the dynamic that we have on stage is basically Glenn is, Glenn is the front man, he's up front, and, and I kind of take the back seat behind the piano, and, and I really enjoy that dynamic, you know, he does all the speaking and stuff, so all, all we kind of arranged was, listen, if, if we do happen to go up, you know, I said to Glenn, you, you go and say something, and I'll just come forward and say thank you at the end of it. And I, I was very happy with that arrangement. Cause and, you, and Glenn, did you, did you have a speech? Did you have, some, did you have like a fantasy Jim will fix it, you know, in the front of the mirror at home sort of thing? I, 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 kind, of felt on the, I kind of felt on the day that it might, it, might, it, might be, uh, it might be worthwhile just having something in your mind. And actually, the only thing, the only thing I wanted to say on the night was thank you, John Carney. The director at the moment. That was, yeah, because yeah, John, John wrote this film, directed it, where you know took me and Maren cast us in this and has done, you know this has done our career a lot of, like a lot of good. And did you and say thank you, John Carney? I didn't. After the love, I didn't. <laughs> because because yeah, I know. Uh, because what happened was I went up on stage and literally when 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 he said my name, everything just went out of my head. Let's, let's let's remind. Do you want to see the what he said? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, this is good. But they both said Glenn and Mark Kelly. John Travolta, by the way. That's what a good story. Goes to, excuse me. Glenn Hansard and Arcadia Glover for falling slowly for months. Thanks. Yeah. Um, this is amazing. Uh, what are we doing here? This is mad. Uh, Thanks for taking this film seriously, all of you. It means a lot to us. This is amazing. Make art. Make art. Yeah, thanks. Fair play to those who dare to dream and don't give up. And, and this song was written from a perspective of hope. And hope, at the end of the day, connects us all, no matter how different we are. And so thank you so much who helped us along the way. Thank you. As you can see, I mean, <clears throat> as you can see there, I just didn't have a clue. I was just like, <laughs> you know, and actually, I, I, it was just one of, I just wanted to say thanks, John Carney. Thank oh, you, John. I know, I did, it was I all know. I wanted to say, and then it just, like, you know, my brain turned to mush. And then we went, back we went backstage, and then you're met by a bank of photographers who want to get your reaction. And then suddenly Mar was kind of taken away from me and I was kind of standing there hugging people I don't know, hugging the, you know, the, the backstage crew guys and just being like, ah. Oh. And then Mar was gone and I, and, I, and I sort of chased her around the back of the stage and suddenly, she, and as I got to her, she was just literally walking back out on stage and she hadn't a clue. What happened, because you're, you, you went up to say thank you and I was like, see you, good luck, and then something happened. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know what exactly happened, to be honest, because there was a lot of confusion back then. Plus, we, were, we didn't know, you know, we, we thought we were on another planet because, you know, we, just, we were just so yeah. happy and excited. Um, but, but somebody just grabbed me and said, we want to get you back on stage because you didn't get to, you know, we cut you off during your speech. And, and would you go, go back on stage and finish it? Because it was, a, you know, obviously it was a special moment for you and we wanted to have it. Yeah. And I was like, OK, and, and uh, they sent me off to, on stage. And then uh, only later I realised, you know, what an amazing thing they'd done, because apparently it hadn't, hadn't been done in all the 80 years. Of and no one saw it. A lot, a lot of people got to see your speech because it was cut from the global Oscar package that was sent around the world. Right. But that we corrected that wrong here tonight. Right. The first person you hugged, and the person who I think is your first phone call every time you win something and have done since once, is? Me, ma. Your ma. <laughs> 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 